Mm -hmm. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about a little bitty 380 backup handgun made by AMT in California. And AMT is Arcadia Machine and Tool. All right. Here's a copy of that little rascal. It is all stainless steel. Even all the internal parts are stainless steel also. Makes it very durable, rust resistant, or rust proof I guess you'd say. As far as I can tell, this is a older gun. It's been made, it been made um, in the 70s, I believe is where this gun's from. And we're gonna show you how to take it apart a little bit and talk a little bit about why we're taking it apart. So, and it's, it don't have a, the typical uh, lever like we would normally have on the side of it to take to, to take it down, uh, to uh, be able to take, slide off of it. It's a little bit aggravating, honestly, to get this thing apart sometimes. Uh, I think it's one of the things that, that some people would not care for. But other than that, it's a, it's a neat little gun. Very, very compact, very easy to hide. It's a bit heavy because it is all stainless steel. Okay. We have the mag releases on the bottom of the grip. So I guess you'd say that's an ambidextrous uh, mag release. How about that? It has a cool little finger grip to it. And that being the case, I'll go ahead and show you that the gun is not loaded. All right, we have an empty chamber. Right. But uh, with that being the case, a little finger grip there, you have that little lip that holds your second finger on for a gun so small. That's really, uh, to me, is a big plus. Makes it uh, more, somewhat more comfortable to be able to hold it that way. Okay. See, right or left hand, it's gonna work the same way. So your grips are flat on both sides, so that don't matter as far as your right or left hand. The only thing that is not ambidextrous is the safety. So your safety button is on the left hand side. And, uh, but other than that, there's really no controls on it to be concerned with as far as right or left handed. That makes it kind of neat. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and pull the magazine out of it. Everybody notice it does have a grip panel, grip safety on the back of the, uh, the back strap. So that does have to be depressed before the gun will fire. And speaking of that, you really have to have a really good solid grip on it to be able to uh, get the trigger to fire. I'll pull it here, maybe we can see it. That you gotta have a really good grip on it and you hear it click right there. It takes some effort, so you have to have a good, uh, good handle on the gun to make it function. And that being the case, it's probably a good thing because this is going to be a backup just in case kind of deal. It's not going to be something that's going to typically go out and target practice with a whole lot because it uh, is not much to hold on to, honestly. All right, back to, to the disassembly of this little tool. We need our punch. And this is a 1 8 punch. I'm going to take our punch right here to the takedown pin and give it a little tap with my plastic hammer. Pull it up now so we can drive the pin on out. All right now our pin comes out as a takedown pin. All right. Pull our punch out. We'll push it back slightly on the, on the slide so the bolt will come out of it. All right. I'm going to take my punch, put it on the inside, and tap it from the bottom of the grip. And we knock our bolt out of it. Is that cool? And within the bolt, you have your firing pin is contained and also your extractor. Okay. So that's all there is to it. You do that. Now, like any traditional standard firearm that most people would know of as a handgun, you can push a little bit forward and, well, I guess after you, after you release the hammer, a little forward and the gun comes apart. Now you've got it field stripped to be able to clean it like we normally would. As with any typical cleaning, we're gonna put a little solvent in here on the tracks um, and inside the barrel, in the uh, ramp, clean off all the carbon or lead buildup that may be there. And if you'll notice, since we've got the, the slide off of it, you can see that uh, right here, we have a really nice, neat TIG weld where the barrel has been mounted to the uh, frame on both sides. And I'm a, a welder by trade also. That's a really good weld right there looks nice but that being the case at the same time you see the barrel does not move you can't take the barrel off the frame so this had to be from the factory built with a really precision jig so that nothing would move and granted it's still not going to be like i said a target kind of uh, firearm so it don't have to be so precise it's definitely for a up close and personal situation all right so we'll run our solvent through here and uh, come back with a clean dry patch and follow it up with a little bit of light oil in our tracks and uh, inside the barrel. Just a little touch of lubrication there. All right. 
And now to reassemble it, we're going to pull our uh, hammer back, cock it in the, in the cock position. Okay. Then we'll put our recoil spring back into its location in the bottom of the slide. And this can be a little bit touchy. We're going to ho hold the recoil spring so that when we put it back into the frame of the gun, it fits into a pocket. Let me show that easier. We have a pocket right here below the barrel that the guide rod will have to sit into. All right. So you'll put that guide rod down into the pocket and at the same time holding, holding it straight to be able to get your slide back in position. Okay, we put our guide rod back in its recess right there. Okay. Now we're going to pull back on it, put the slide down on top of the frame. Okay. And if I get it just right, <laughs> there we go. Push it down, which you can see here now we're pushing our, our hammer down a little bit more and push the gun, push the slide back slightly so we'll get uh, caught into our track on the slide, all right? Now we've got the slide back on the top of the frame with the hammer in the cock position. We're gonna drop our bolt right in the back in the top, get it just right in that position and here's where your rubber mallet comes in handy. You will need to typically tap this in a little bit. Get my firing pin started. If you get your firing pin started down, it starts to go down. And it's a little bit touchy right there. It's a good tight fit. So a little tap on your rubber hammer. You got it in place again. And now we're going to take our takedown pin and put it back into, into its spot. Again, a little tap with our plastic or rubber hammer. Our pin is back in position, and now the gun is ready to perform again. Isn't that cool? Oh, one thing I want to notice too, while I've got it here looking at it, maybe the camera can see this, but uh, right here we've got labeled as, as AMT. It says caliber 380, but also beside the 380, it says 9mm KURZ, K-U-R-Z. And uh, just in case you don't know, the 9mm KURZ is the uh, original German designation for three for nine millimeter uh, short, I think it's what it was originally called. And the curves is the same thing as a as a three eighty uh, that we know, three eighty ACP caliber. All right, so there you go for our little three eighty backup by AMT. All right. So, and that being said, we got our magazine back in, and we're ready to rock and roll again. Okay. Hope you guys like that, and uh, for something we can help you with with uh, Maverick Gun Works. All right, give us a call. Thanks for watching.